you are gonna love this segment because one of the most beautiful things to behold is something that is almost impossible to see with the naked eye, snowflakes. The icy crystal beauties contain all these intricate details that disappear so quickly, they're ephemeral. For a photographer, they are one of the hardest things to photograph in nature. Nathan Mirhold, founder of Modernist Cuisine, pioneered food photography techniques and has now tackled the elusive melting snowflake and he joins me now. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, my pleasure. This is so interesting. What inspired you to photograph snowflakes? What fascinates you about well, them? Well, first of all, water is one of the most important commodities that we all consume. I, right. I take pictures of food, but I decided, hey, water is important. <laughs> it is. And of course, all summer long, the water that we drink fell as snow. Right. Fell snow in the Cascades, it melts, and that's true essentially all the way across the temperate world. Right. Uh, and yet it's not just a commodity. Yeah. You know, when the conditions are right, snowflakes are insanely beautiful. Right. Each one looks like it was an intricately designed, yet you know there's a billion of them falling it's at amazing. that moment in time. At that moment, these are all coming down. It's interesting, I love that you mentioned the water cycle and how important it all is and, and combined. So what we're looking at now is something that is always <laughs> in our lives. What were some of the challenges you encountered though? I can't imagine it was easy to get these on a slide and get them photographed. It's not easy. <laughs> um, so first of all, they're, they're little. Yeah, they're tiny. Um, tiny, tiny, tiny. Usually they're a couple millimeters across, so very, very small. Right. Um, uh, rarely they can be bigger. They're very thin. Mm -hmm. uh, they're typically about 10 microns. That's about one-tenth the thickness of a hair on your right, head. Right, right, right. So it's, it's super small. And of course, the beauty is in the details. Right. So you need to be able to look very deeply, but the snowflake isn't there for long. Right, how do you so capture it, that it melts, second? But it doesn't even just melt, it, uh, it almost evaporates. Oh. Uh, it goes directly into vapor. Uh, so uh, you have to do it outside. Mm -hmm. You can't bring the snowflake inside. You got to take your <laughs> microscope outside, and then you have to build a microscope that is happy being outside. <laughs> um, and even that isn't enough. You need to uh, cool parts of the microscope. And I want to ask you about that because that's where you are a tech master. That is where <laughs> the tech came into play: is building that equipment, that camera, that microscope. Talk to me about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this is the business end of the microscope. Um, a lot of it is built out of carbon fiber because carbon fiber doesn't change dimensions mm -hmm. as it gets cold. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of other things, the metal parts do change dimensions, so you have to allow for that. But you can see there's some um, uh, cooling things. We have to actively cool the stage of the microscope right. to make sure that it is extra cold for the snowflake because we're pumping a lot of light through it to take right. the picture. And the light introduces some heat. So it's not enough to just be outside. You have to actively cool the thing. Right. Um, and he, so we set up typically on a porch or outside. Um, and he, here you can see that it's set up that way. It's um, so cool. Uh, and then I go out and I catch snowflakes for I do, it. Just, you're like, I'm going to catch snowflakes. <laughs> I do that. Okay, so typically, when I see snowflakes, I mean, they fall in kind of clumps. You can almost see that maybe sometimes they're clumped together. Like, how do you separate them? Okay, so the clumping happens uh, more often uh -huh. when uh, it's relatively warm out. Okay, so it's wet snow, essentially. Yeah, so, which is what we get in Seattle. Right. Seattle snow, sadly, isn't good for this because the snowflakes will typically have stuck together. Got it, okay. Um, uh, the best looking snowflakes happen when it's about minus five Fahrenheit. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's got to be cold. So I typically go to Fairbanks, Alaska, or Yellowknife, Canada, uh, or some other places in Canada. And uh, you want to have it also snowing a lot. Yeah, um, right. Uh, surprisingly, there's ski resorts where it doesn't snow all that often. I originally thought, oh, I'll just go to a <laughs> ski place. But I got to go to Whistler. Wait, no. <laughs> what? It, well, Whistler's a good example of a place where it doesn't snow as reliably as got some it. other places. So. When we're talking about the wet snow, obviously it's not a good snowflake, but talking about snowflakes, you know, is it true that no two snowflakes are alike? Well, no, but yes. <laughs> so uh, a lot of snowflakes are simple little hexagonal plates mm -hmm. uh, or they are um, little rods and they're very boring. Uh, powder snow is right. typically very boring. Boring. What's interesting is what are called dendritic snowflakes. You can see some here mm -hmm. um, because water has a six-fold symmetry in its crystal form, mm -hmm. you typically will have six arms on one of these, and then each of those arms will branch out and branch out more. 
Um, you can get up to 12 arms. Wow. Um, but it's typically, it's not continuously like six, seven, eight, nine. It's either six or it's 12. So how do you catch that? Like, how do you separate it? You just, you get it this down? This is okay. how you catch a snowflake. Okay, I'm ready. So this is a piece of black foam core board and I go outside and you hold it out and snowflakes fall on. Look at you. And there I am. You can see I'm doing exactly that. <laughs> um, you have to bundle up because yeah, it's really cold. Oh my goodness. So then you look at them in the light and you, you try to see how they, gl they glint. And right. with a naked eye, you can't tell exactly what they will look like. Right. But you, you can tell which is going to be maybe a good one. Well, they sparkle like the, the way one of your uh, diamond rings would sparkle. And when you see that sparkle, I then take this. This is a sable brush right. that you might use for watercolor painting mm -hmm. or even for makeup. And you touch it to the snowflake. And what happens is that there's enough static electricity, because it's very dry right. in the air, that the snowflake, as you get bring the, the brush close, it'll actually jump up to it. It will. It'll just move up to it. Yep. Uh, then when you bring, I have a, a, sli mm -hmm. a, a slide. Most microscopes use a glass slide. For this, we actually use artificial sapphire slides. Cool. Because of the cold, they work better. right? Well, it's cold and it transmits the cold better, so mm. it's easier for us to cool. So then we take that and we have to transfer it and sort of scrape yeah. it off onto that slide. And the slide goes in the microscope. That is amazing. Thank you so much for... for Thinking of doing this, for sharing this with us, I could literally stare at these images all day long. They're so beautiful. Where can people see more? Well, at uh, 1403 First, just up uh, the, the street <laughs> from where we are now, we have the Modernist Cuisine Gallery. And uh, you can see them there blown up really large. And oh, I will be there. Don't worry. I may be there a lot. Thank you so much. It's been a Thank pleasure. You.